Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to Lego Mini Reviews, the show where I review a ton of different Lego vintage and new sets right here on the Duck Bricks YouTube channel in a short form format. So I have a ton of Brickling orders to get through as well as just associated Lego purchases and I figured instead of making a mega video where I go through every single one that's hours long, why not break it up into separate mini reviews? And so in addition to our normal three videos a week schedule, be be sure to stay tuned for a mini review dropping every single day where we do not normally have a standard video releasing. I hope you enjoy and let's jump right into our first pick. But next up, we can take a look at the next Monkey Kid set. This is set number 80033, Evil Macaques Mech retailing for 80 US dollars. It features five minifigures, one of Macaques minions, the Evil Macaque himself redesigned for 2022, a fully powered up May figure featuring all of the collectibles from this wave, the standard Monkey Kid figure as well as a new minifigure for Sandy, who previously was only a big figure. So first of all, let's just take a look at the figures themselves. I already talked about the May figure in the previous review, but this one actually does look pretty cool. I really like the inclusion of the collectibles themselves. They actually really add a sense of gravitas to the character and really does feel like this is a powered up version despite actually not featuring any exclusive prints on the torso. It's just using the actual collectibles to be built onto her. The macaque figure itself is probably one of the coolest figures of the wave. We actually did get a macaque figure in the previous lineup of Monkey Kid sets, but he was just using the standard MK hairpiece, and this time he gets a special brand new mold all to himself, featuring his six ears, which is a staple of the character. He also has the black tail going outwards on the back here, a cape, the dark red scarf piece, which is new and dark red, it was used for the Lego movie, as well as a massively detailed staff with a transparent purple flame. So. It is a really cool figure, great for the main villain of the wave, and I'm really interested to see where the story takes the characters because typically he's not necessarily a full-on villain, sometimes he's just kind of a standard side antagonist, so I'm kind of curious to see how they actually make him the main villain for this wave. We haven't really talked about the minions a lot in the process of this review, so I'll take this time now to briefly talk about them because of course this is Macaque's set. I do actually like the design of them, although they are fairly simple. The red printing on the black head is not the best. It's a little bit too dark red for my taste, especially because the red printing here is supposed to be the same red as the red on the arms. So that doesn't feel quite right to me, but I guess I understand why they would want to actually try to print it. I just feel like LEGO has to improve their quality standards a bit there. It's also really cool to get a recolor of the Ninjago weapon piece in gunmetal gray. These weapon pieces are really useful for building in general, and this is used a lot of times throughout the set, so I think it's really cool to see this actually being recolored. MK himself we talked about previously, not too much else to say here, really nicely detailed figure with the dual molded legs and the printing on the arms. And the Sandy figure is actually a really great minifigure representation of one of the main characters. Previously, one of the biggest problems with including Sandy as a main character in the MK sets was that he was a big fig, which means the set had to be scaled around him and it probably meant the set was a lot more overpriced. Having him as a minifig seems to have solved that problem, and he obviously is the same character so I think it works out very well. He has nice printing on the sides of the legs too, really just makes us feel like a deluxe figure, and all in all, it's a nice figure representation of one of the main characters. We also get a side build for Monkey Kid's staff, which doubles as a massive blaster here. Nothing too much else I can say about this. I feel like it would have made sense for this to fire a larger projectile than just the stud shooter on the side, but I guess it does the job and serves as a nice side prop to combat the main mech. But with that, let's actually take a look at the main mech itself. To be completely honest, I am not necessarily the biggest fan of how this particular set came together, at least in comparison to other Monkey Kid mechs. I think they really set the bar with the absolutely fantastic Bull Demon mechs, the Bone Demon mech, and of course the Monkey King Warrior mech, where this one just feels like a bit of a step back. It kind of just feels like a standard Ninjago styled mech, which isn't necessarily too bad. I just feel like at this stage, Monkey Kid could be doing better than that. So. That being said, that does not make this a bad set at all. In fact, no, it is a very, very nicely built mech, really great for play with just a few things I feel like could have been improved. So let's just take a look at articulation here. 
Starting off with the arms, let's actually, uh, well, I was going to say let's remove the staff, but it did the removing for me. Let's just take a look at how you can move them around. You've got these shoulder pauldrons, which are on the mixel ball joints, so those are nicely angled upwards. He's using the brand new joint introduced for LEGO Ninjago as well, using this kind of newer style of ratchet joint connection to actually allow you to have full-on ratchet joints for the arms, which is a really nice piece. Really glad they introduced that element. The arms are just using click hinges for the elbows, which does somewhat limit articulation, makes it feel a little bit juniorized and almost old school in the way they're doing that, but I guess they work out okay. I do like this spiky bracelet he has on one hand. That's a pretty cool idea there. And all in all, the arm articulation is fairly good. You can really move them up, get a lot of poses out of the arms here. I'm very happy with the way the arms can articulate. What I'm not too happy with, however, is the way the legs articulate. I feel like we're at this point today where LEGO mechs can kind of try to branch outwards from never including knees, and I do know that some mechs do include knees. Recently we got a Ninjago Zanes mech just last year that was pretty much just this scale, if not even bigger, that did have a great knee technique. Really would have loved to see that knee technique being used here, but sadly it was not and you can just see the legs are fixed at this angle. So LEGO does do this to make the mechs more stable, but what I also don't understand is that you cannot actually change the articulation of the feet. You can rotate them, but you cannot change them, and they specifically lock the articulation, which means you can only get this in a standing pose. You cannot get this in a walking pose because the moment you try to make him walk forwards, his foot's not on the ground. You can't bend this downwards. Again, they could have easily solved this by removing this piece here, then you can bend the foot like this, and there you go, you get him in a much different walking pose, or at least a slightly different one like so. You can see here his feet are firmly on the ground, but you can actually bend them. But specifically because they included these pieces here, you cannot bend the feet, and I don't know why they did that. You can't actually get him into any poses. Probably one of my biggest problems with the set, they probably went a little bit too overboard in terms of making it completely stable, which yes, it is stable. If I want to plop him down on the ground, he is stable, but it also means he's kind of like a statue. You can't really do much with it, and that's just a little bit disappointing to me personally. It isn't one of the much larger mechs that really needed there to be no feet articulation. They could have easily added a little bit more other than just rotating, and that's probably one of my big complaints. Complaints. Moving onwards though, I think the rest of it is not too too bad. I like the shaping of the body here with the slightly elevated reactor core here, which is a nice design. The head itself is really good. It's basically just a very similar form of the Monkey King Warrior mech, but this time in kind of an evil, more black and dark brown form, which is very very different, but definitely stands out as a rival to the MK Major mech back here, we actually have a spot to put the staff if he's not holding it, so that's really nice. I actually do like its inclusion here. You can have him wield the staff on the back, which is a very nice detail, just to include on the back of the mech here. And there are some nicely detailed transparent purple engine bits, which really do actually make this feel armored up on the back. Obviously, the tail is very simple, just using the Mixel ball joints, and it is very skinny in some parts in the back here. But all in all, I think this is probably one of the weaker MK mechs. Really just hurts the level of articulation, not being able to move the feet here. The feet also feel very, very simplified for what they are, and for this being a mech, there is no place to put the minifigure of Macaque. It just seems to be like a large scaled up version of him because there's no place you can put him. They didn't even try to actually have any cockpit or anything. You cannot even stick him onto the shoulder or anything. So this is not really a mech or I guess it's a mech that he has to control remotely because he cannot actually fit in it. There is no seat for him. It's just a large scale figure. That being said, I think with that we can probably move on to the next set. I do actually like the set for what it is, although I do feel like it could have been a lot better, and definitely as it is right now, it is a lot smaller than the Monkey King Warrior mech, so if you wanted to have them battle each other, the scales of those isn't really going to work out too too well. It's just going to absolutely trounce this mech because this is a lot shorter and a lot smaller than the previous Monkey mech. Alright, and with that, we have summed up this mini LEGO review. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and do let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this set. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And if you own it, what have been your experiences with building and playing with the set itself? Also, let me know in the comments if you like this format of mini reviews. I'm trying to put them out on a fairly regular basis. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very, very soon.